Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem three from hacker rank hour rank 27 entitled moving the kings. The question states in the game chess world, there are multiple kings and the location of each king on the board is known to you. In a single step, a king can move in one of eight directions as shown below. For every query you need to solve, you are given a meeting point for the kings to meet and your task is to calculate the sum of the minimum number of steps for each king to reach the meeting point. And note for this question, we're given n, which is the number of kings, and q, the number of queries, and both of these are going to be in the range uh, between uh, 1 and 10 to the 5. So let's take a look at some background for this problem. So it's not explicitly mentioned in the Hacker Rank editorial, uh, but this question is asking us about Chebyshev uh, distance here. So there's three uh, different types of distance, Euclidean distance, Chebyshev distance, and Manhattan distance. And uh, this question is asking us about Chebyshev distance. And the first thing the Hacker uh, rank editorial mentions is about rotating your grid in order to uh, make it easier. Um, but it doesn't basically uh, explicitly mention what's happening here. And there's a relationship between Chebyshev distance and Manhattan distance. So I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, I'll leave links to the Wikipedia article and also uh, the blog that I got these diagrams from. But basically it's saying is if we rotate the Chebyshev distance or the Chebyshev coordinates, we end up being able to remove the maximum uh, from this formula in terms of calculating the distance and we have a formula that looks more similar to the Manhattan distance which is going to uh, simplify this problem. Uh, so if you want to look more into uh, this information, uh, links will be in the description. So this is a diagram that's very similar to what was in uh, the Hacker Rank editorial, but it uh, provides a little bit more information. So what we have here on the left is a two-dimensional grid. So this would be a simplified chessboard that we have. So our X and Y coordinates, 1, 1 in the bottom left and 4, 4 in the top right. And what the Hacker Rank editorial is trying to tell you is that if we apply this Chebyshev transformation to the coordinates, we end up with something like this. So what is the Chebyshev transformation? It's setting the new coordinates to be x plus y and x minus y. So if we define a to be equal to x plus y and b to be equal to x minus y, uh, we can then uh, have these two new what we'll call Chebyshev uh, coordinates a and b. And using these new coordinates, uh, what we're able to do is use this new formula. So using x and y, we have to use this maximum. But using a and b, once they've been transformed, we can use this formula 1 over 2 uh, multiplied by the summation of the absolute difference between uh, the A's and the B's. And uh, this will give us uh, the same distance as this formula will do. So the first thing we're going to do in our problem or in our code solution is we're going to transform X and Y into A and B. And then we're going to figure out a way to uh, calculate these distances efficiently. So now that we've talked about this, uh, let's look at an example. So we have uh, four kings here, and uh, this is the representation of our board. And what we're going to have to do here is uh, figure out the minimum distance for each of these kings to get to a uh, target. Uh, cell or target square. So uh, we've highlighted our kings here and this uh, yellow uh, Chebyshev coordinates 5 and 1 are going to be our, our target A and our target B. So we have A and B for each of our kings and then a target A and target B that we're trying to get to. Uh, so the problem is basically uh, we're gonna the way we're going to try and solve it is by looking at it uh, in sort of two parts. So we're trying to calculate the distance uh, of our A coordinates to get to our target a and our B coordinates to get to our target B. Uh, so it's going to look like this for our A's getting to our target A and uh, for our B's getting to our target B. So basically the sum of all these pink and purple arrows is going to be our answer. So how do we calculate these efficiently? So the first thing we're going to do is construct uh, vectors of our A coordinates and our B coordinates. And note that although these are in pairs, so we have 2, 0, 4, negative 2, and so on and so forth, we don't actually need to treat these as uh, pairs anymore. Because we've eliminated the maximum, we can treat these separately and just calculate the total distance of our A's going to our target A and our B's going to our target B. So using 
using that fact, we can then sort our uh, A and B vectors. So only there was a change to B there. And then once we've done that, we'll use our uh, numeric partial sum function to calculate the running sum of our A and B vectors. So we have SA and SB, and this just represents the running sum of these values. So we start with zero, add two to that to get two, add four to that to get six, and so on and so forth for both of these. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a binary search function lower bound on both our target A and target B uh, to figure out where the target A and target B fit in in this sorted array. So if we do that, we end up with uh, a lower bound for A uh, passing in the value 5, giving us uh, an iterator pointing to the number 6, and for B, an iterator pointing to the number 2. And then once we have these two values, we can extract out the distance to get the index. So we'll use the distance function to get our index for A to be equal to 2 and then our index for B to be equal to 3. And then now we have all the information we need to calculate uh, the total sum of all of the values from our uh, A's to our target A and our B's to our target B. So uh, we're going to use this formula here. Uh, so this is just showing it for the uh, A's going to the target A, but you could do the same thing or you will do the same thing for your B's. But basically what this saying is it's taking our index uh, 2 here for A and multiplying that by our target value. So this is index times our target value minus the sum of those uh, a's so that's what 6 minus 0 is so here I've highlighted the numbers basically the 2 is our index and this is giving us 10 so this is basically giving us uh, the distance from 5 to 0 and then 5 to 0 and then it's subtracting the difference from 0 to 2 and 0 to 4 so that's going to end up with as 10 minus 6 which is going to give us 4 so this will be uh, the total distance for the a's less than our target a getting to our a and then the second line here is just getting the A's that are greater than our target A and so the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to use our partial uh, sum function or vector that we've calculated to extract out the total sum of our top values so that's going to be 19 minus 6 which is going to give us 6 plus 7 so that's 13 here and then we're just going to subtract now uh, this n minus 2 times our target value 5 here so originally for the values less we're calculating basically a grid here and then subtracting out uh, the values uh, from 0 to 2 and 0 to 4 and from here we're taking 0 to 6 and 0 to 7 to get us 13 and we're subtracting out uh, 0 to 5 and 0 to 5 which will give us 3. Uh, so if we do this for both uh, A and B, we're going to end up with our total sum. So visually, once again, what that looks like is we're going uh, from our A's to our target A. So this line here is uh, capturing uh, these two purple lines, and the second line is capturing uh, the other two purple lines. So you just have to repeat this process uh, for the B's, and then sum all of this together and multiply it by, two, uh, by one half, and you'll get your answer, which will end up being seven so let's take a look at our code so here we have uh, just one uh, function the main function at the top we are uh, declaring some variables that we're going to use and then uh, reading in our first two n and q and then we're declaring uh, some vectors of long longs so we're initializing a and b uh, to be have a, a memory allocated for n long longs uh, and for some a and some b we're just initializing it to be a vector of just one value zero because we're going to use the partial sum function and the back inserted to fill those later uh, so then the first thing we do is we call our for loop we read in our x's and y's and then we do our transformation to get our A and B Chebyshev uh, coordinates. Once we've done that, we sort these, uh, and then from the sorted vectors A and B, we then calculate our running sum vectors, sum A and sum B, using our partial sum function, as I mentioned before, and using a back inserter call on sum A and sum B to fill uh, the rest of the values for those vectors. And then once we've done this, we have Q uh, queries to get through. So we have a while loop. We're reading in our X and Y again, calculating our target A and our our target B from our X and Y's the same way we did up here and then we have our uh, two binary function calls to lower bounds so uh, we're, we're 
calling lower bound and passing in our target value and then from this calculating the distance to get uh, our index and then once we have our index we just use the formulas that we showed before so index times our target value uh, minus the uh, sum of our first uh, index values and then uh, so that covers the values that are less than our target value and for our values that are greater than our target value uh, we just calculate the sum of those values which is the la the end of our sum a vector minus uh, sum a index and then uh, subtracting from it n minus index times our target value so you basically do the exact same thing for both the a and the b values and once you've done that you just divide by two and you'll have your answer and the last thing to talk about is time complexity. The time complexity of this problem, uh, our sort is going to be n log n, and our uh, binary searches, our lower bounds, are going to be uh, log n times q. So we have uh, o uh, n log n, and technically it's n plus q times log n. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.